I've been making art ever since I remember as a preschooler, and some of that was coloring books. And I didn't color them the way the adults in my life thought they might be colored. <laughs> my art is in what I call impressionistic because I would like to engage the viewer in the piece. I'm most interested in how other people might incorporate the artwork that I make into their lives. You know, I describe my work as impressionistic. I would also describe it as exploratory, the same as my life is. I've been making work for a long time, and so I have a backlog of tools and supplies and references and styles to draw on. And in the development of the work, I'll adapt those different styles and tools and methods. This is not our first home in Cornell. Our, our main home is in the wilderness, off-grid, a couple of hours drive on logging roads away from here. And I did a piece of work and I thought, oh, this is so good. And I propped it up on the piano. I went for a walk with the dogs and came back. And this piece was so awful that I burst out laughing. I, it was really, really bad. It needed time out. <laughs> More recently, in the last few years, I've been exploring the use of art resin. The colors can be so punchy. And, of course, the glass-like dried finish of the resin adds to that. And what I love is the layering. So this piece on the end has about seven layers. And when you look at it, you see a layer of color, and then there's some text and another layer of resin, and then there's some drawing. When I do resin, depending on how it's set up, sometimes the resin will run off the edges of the work, and I save those. I have containers filled with little drips, and then I can use the drips and lay them on top as an added piece of texture or interest or something to catch the light and reflect it. And some things that have influenced me um, is the ability to study art in school and to learn some basic background and art history and skills. And as an adult, to take classes, go to workshops and residencies where I might be taught a particular skill, how to mix pink, Looking at other people's art, going to museums and galleries and during COVID online <laughs> isn't, quite, isn't the same. Another thing that encourages me is teaching other people. I've taught children and adults and I mentor mid-career artists and, and I learn, I think, as much or more from those processes. I majored in high school in art, and I turned down a, a scholarship to Banff School of Fine Arts in order to accept the scholarship for the School of Nursing, because that's more practical, because I know I can earn money nursing. <laughs> and one of my pro instructors at Emily Carr cautioned me when I thought I'd died and gone to heaven making art and going to art school, said, keep your day job. You know, you need to pay for materials, Judy. <laughs> It's also encouraged some learning using Zoom, learning different ways to reach out and share. COVID has affected me more outside of my art making. I'm still um, exhibiting in group exhibits and solo exhibits and shared exhibits with Sherry Mason, with Megan Long. For me, of being an artist is being a good businesswoman as well. And I will wait for a call for exhibits, but I also promote myself. So there was a big Arctic conference at UNBC, and there was no art component. And I knew about the people, I knew about the conference, and I proposed to them. I've been to the Arctic three times, I've been to the Antarctic. How about, you know, here's my portfolio, here's my CV, you have art space here, how about having art as part of your conference? I got to attend the conference and learn all kinds of things. And I was invited 
to have work go to Germany, to an environmental school. And we didn't ship the work. I made a PowerPoint presentation for them to show. So I'm interested in cosmology and I wanted to see how can I show planets? How can I show black holes? And, and then how can I show the human involvement, the history of how indigenous peoples interpreted the heavens and, and what we're learning from these incredible displays that are gathering information and things like the web satellite that's up there right now. So paying attention to the world beyond art. Look at the science magazine, look at the fashion magazine, look at recipes, <laughs> look broadly. The work that's on the table in the studio right now is about Tahardi. It's about our wilderness home. And there, it was really damaged in the 2017 plateau fires, not the house, but the property and subsequent flooding. And this is the ranch after the fire. And I have collected sawdust and burned leaves and burned pine cones and incorporated them. I use drywall compound and white glue. There's twigs and grasses, you can see. The fence went like this. The fence is gone and the ashes are left. I've collaged photos from the fire forest meadow right into the piece. And that's what these two pieces are about. There's more, this is called the witness series. So this is the fire with layers of color and drawing and words. This is called overdrawn and of course it's overdrawn by me. This is the hill and the meadow, and another meadow, the house is tucked in here. And um, I called it overdrawn because of the work, but also um, because our account with nature is overdrawn. I'm really passionate about human rights. I'm really passionate about environmental degradation and, and change. And we see that here in Cornell, but we, we see it even more at our wilderness property. It's thousands of acres and we see fire and flood and disappearing wildlife. So I'm passionate about all of those things and making art is a way of me observing the world, those shapes, those colors, those socks, <laughs> and um, recording it. And then I may use that to div as part of a piece, or it might be a stepping off point. The, the making of a piece, a generic piece, hasn't changed because I work, uh, I travel even, and when I say travel now, I don't travel abroad because of COVID, but I go to the Riverwalk or wherever it is I go, West Fraser Park, and I look at things and draw them, which I prefer over Working from photographs doesn't work well for me. I'm not seeing other art as much, and that really feeds me, is seeing art that the masters have done, but art that my fellow artist up the street or um, down the block, what, what she's creating and talking to one another about it. So that's been limited. There's no openings for exhibits, and I love sharing my art. We have racks of paintings in the garage and I'd love to haul them out and show 